My name is Dennis Itumbi of ID number 2221988 and this is my statement to the police as appertains the date 23rd December 2021. This 23rd December 2021 is the day that I was abducted from Thindegwa, that's along Kiambo Road, as I left the barber shop. So this is how the sequence of events. I left the house early afternoon and I was heading to meet up with Wanjohi Gidai, who is a UDA communications director at Village Market. Along the way, we exchanged a call and he had not left office. So when the Boda Boda guys who operate by Delta petrol station next to the road stopped me to participate in a fundraising of one of them who had passed on, I agreed. And so after a while, we raised the amount that they needed. And then I got back to the car. And as I moved, I made another call and my friend uh, Wanjoy Gidai had not, had not reached at the point where we were supposed to meet. So I decided to get into the nearest barber shop from there, which is Caesar's Barber Shop. I parked, the, the parking was full, so I parked just next to the road. There was uh, an empty space there. I then get, got into the barber shop and I had a good time at the barber shop, had a chat with the people at the barber shop. They did their bit of shaving me. Then as I left, just at the stairs, just before, there are stairs which you go through, then you cross the road to get to where my car was. Some three men, well built, approached me from a car that was parked next to mine, which was a premium. The number plate is not off my head because I came to know about the number plate later on uh, public and social media. So it is a matter of public record. Um, the, the vehicle, which appeared to me to be a Toyota premium, silver in color they left and came towards me so i thought one of them just wanted to say hello so i stopped waiting for him to come and say hello but when they approached they screamed that they actually shouted we are police officers and uh you are under arrest so i said if you're police officers can i see an id so one of them flashed an id and i could see it's a police officer um then the rest said sasawata protesta wakati twende at that moment, because of the hurry they were in and uh, the bit they were doing, I decided that I was going to shout so that at least everyone around my environment would know that I'm gone. So I told them to pick the number plate of the car that I was being taken to uh, because there had been incidences before which I'd heard about. So I said, take the number plate. I said, I asked people from the salon which was nearby the Kinyozi and there is a car wash across to take a picture and videos of the gentlemen who are now, by now, forcefully trying to get me into their car. They eventually managed by lifting me up by force and got me into the vehicle they were in. So behind, I had two, I had two gentlemen. There was a gentleman in front and there was a driver. So now there were four men and myself. They were in such a hurry that they reversed too fast. We got on the road. Immediately we hit the tarmac they took out some blindfolds and put them over my head. Then they took some handcuffs and put them behind me. Then they handcuffed me, reminding me, you know, uh, that these were definitely policemen. And uh, immediately, the guy who was in front had a radio call, and uh, he said he was speaking on the radio call and saying, "Logistics one, we have your man." And then the guys now who had abducted me were busy saying, please bring the other cars because now this one is exposed. Then as kabisa to wende kabisa. So they drove for a while and then at one moment they slowed down, got into a place and then I could hear park anywhere. Unfortunately, I, could, I didn't know where it was. But in between the journey between abduction and the parking, they got into my pockets and took the money in cash that I had. They tried to switch off my phones. They could not switch them off because I insisted it was uh, by facial identity uh, or face ident to unlock the phone. And because they didn't want to do away with my blindfolds, they threw away the phones. Then the other thing that happened is that uh, they started insisting that I had a transmitter in my body. And so they started looking for it. So that at the point of parking, they took some scissors and cut off my clothes 
and left me naked. From then, that point on, as I looked for this imaginary transmitter in my body, that was apparently transmitting whatever I had. Because by then, I could hear them say, Kwani ujamani nani kila mtu anajua ameshikwa. Na kwani akisema ile kitu kidogo walifanya hapo wakapika kere ndi inafanya kila mtu ajue. So the pressure was already too high even at that point. So then they, in between that, still as we went to the police station, I remember them asking me, do you know why you've been arrested? And I said no. And they said, lazima ubadidisha msimamua kwa kisiasa ikue kama ya boss. So I asked them, uyu boss ni nani? Then they told me, utajua tu kwa sabu lazima ubadidisha. So I told them, listen Afande, ata kama uyo boss wenyo nataka ni badirishe, haifanyikangi hivi. Kuna kitu inaito persuasion, na ata ni kibadirisha, I will not be effective, so I will not change. Na ikamambia my decision is made. Even if you are to beat me until you kill me, I will not change my political persuasion and stand. Ah, asa kutoka hapo ujama wakanda kunichapa until when we went to park. Now that's when they are now doing this, cutting off the clothes, looking for this transmitter thing. This psychological torture ya kufunga hii mulango na hile ingine. Hii psychological torture ingine ya kujaribu kungonganisha panga. Eh, trying to hit eh, some hammers. So that I could feel something big was coming. So that took a bit of time. Them beating me, slapping me, what? Then now they are, I assume at that point the other two cars came. Because then they told me magali mefika. Na ule bosa nafa kuinterrogate sasa mefika. So they took me to this other car. I could, uh, I could tell it because, I mean, they took me physically from this car to the next. Then uh, when I got to that car, they got me in and uh, they, I, I could hear them saying, I hope umepiga pangani na natumaini pia umepiga gigiri. Weka watu under confusion kabisa. Alafu anasema uleta ile kamba. So now they started tying my legs. Then, I remember I was naked, then they tied, they, in between my handcuffs, they put in the ropes, tied my waist, and then now they, you could literally pull me off with one strand of the rope on my body. So, af, after that now, they started now, the serious torture. You know, there's a time now they started hitting me with whatever was felt, I felt like was a hammer. They hit me, I could feel them scratching with a sharp object on my body. They hit my knees up to now. I mean, I can't even stay for long. I have to keep stretching my legs. They hit my ankles. The doctor's report and x-rays, which are elsewhere, and which I can provide on request to you, the investigators. The doctors found uh, uh, on my right leg, uh, there was a fracture, and both of my ankles had cracks. Then on my knees, there was uh, some strain. Then uh, on, my left, on my left leg, there was both of my, uh, one, my right ankle on the left leg was, uh, was uh, broken a little bit. And then the, the bone on the behind, which still has a plaster, was also, or on the side, was also broken heavily. Then there is a hand. So the hand at this point and this point is broken. And then, of course, the fingers, because they kept telling me out how I blocked, and, uh, and they were pulling my fingers and then hitting it with the hammers at every turn and uh, so even in hospital what they did is put some wires inside for the fingers to be able to stretch then um on this still has a double fracture i still did even my x-rays today and they still have uh, the double fracture and the fingers then at one point in between after beating me i think there's a point where i, mm, I think in between uh, beating me there's a point where uh, there's a point where i lost I lost it, so I think I passed out. Um, ma much later when I woke up, they didn't realize I'd woken up, and so I could hear them speaking on phone, and I could also hear the read. First was the phone, Some the, the guy sitting in front was basically saying, hey, uu jama, tumem treat ya kutosha, unataka arudisho na mnagani. Then I, the radio call came in and said, this is Commander Logistics 1. Commander of G61, I am ordering you. Mtue uo jamaa pale mko, sahi, I don't care where it is. Of course, I could feel there was traffic on the road because one guy was leaving and I said, wacha ni clear traffic to eze kupita mbio mbio. So there was definitely traffic wherever we were. Then, uh, shortly afterwards, this guy uh, tossed me into some place. This time round now, they remove the blindfolds which they go back with in the car 
I can see the two double cabins. One was a white or sil white stroke silver, and the other one was black. So they left me for dead somewhere in some bush. So I took my time. I think I took about one hour or something close to slightly over one hour, over in between one and two hours to walk up to some point where I saw the light from the bushes. It was raining. So I, I remember, you know, I had not taken anything or drunk or eaten anything before I was kidnapped and abducted by these rogue officers. So at this point, I was looking for water. So I remember taking some leaves and trying to take the water that had come from the rain, but it was not sufficient. I think it had a taste. So I gave up on that. Sort. So I decided to follow a light so that I could get to the where, to get where I could get some help. Tried to stop many cars. Uh, of course, naturally, because I was naked and it was at night, and I now know in hindsight that it's a very dangerous area, no one stopped. But when I got to the roundabout, I managed to stop some border borders. The first pack stopped slightly, then left. So the second set of border borders, when I mentioned my name, one guy recognized me and came to me. But as he tried to convince his passenger to leave so that he could take me to hospital, this taxi guy who had gotten now into the uh, mini traffic that has been caused came over and told me, Dennis Itumbi Nakujua, you have been trending on Twitter, and we've been praying for you, and we also saw you on news. Please get into the car. Immediately I got in the car. I, I told him, my friend, all I need is soda. And you see, at this point now, he told me I was bleeding in the eyes. I could remember at one point when we hit a bump, my blindfolds went off and they thought I had seen them. They are abductors now. So they put some fingers into my eyes, and I think that's what caused the bleeding. So anyway, this guy took me to some place. He went for a bed sheet. To, he, he kept saying, I can't take you to hospital when you're naked. And uh, then he bought me a soda, which I gulped uh, with a lot of thanksgiving in my heart and probably also in my tongue. And uh, after that, he took me to hospital. That's a uh, high name hospital. He kept asking me to take me to a mainstream hospital. And in his mind, a mainstream hospital was Nairobi Hospital or Rakan. I kept telling him, just take me to the nearest hospital. What I need now is first aid. And so he took me to high name in Kasarani, where I got my first aid. And then eventually to Nairobi West Hospital, where I got also absolutely good care. And now I'm here. So this is my official statement of what happened. I think and believe the people you should be investigating is yourself as DCI. That's number one. You should investigate yourself. I mean, uh, since when this incident was filed as an OB, you've done nothing except just interview Makoha, the taxi guy who saved me. You haven't gone to the salon. You haven't gone to the policemen who are arresting people outside the Kenyozi because of uh, masks, uh, pretend, cover, putting a cover so that then the arrest would be justified. You haven't bothered to go to that Kenyozi to interview anyone who saved me and saw the events and the car wash, just to get even the story of what happened. You haven't called any of my friends who spent that day trying to look for me and even trace the phones to a likely area where they were thrown off because they got a signal. In other words, the DCI has done nothing about a very serious crime that was reported to them and was done during broad daylight. So surely, you haven't even bothered to check whether there were CCTV cameras around. Yet, the first responders have done that. Number two, people you should investigate, the Inspector General of Police. This logistics one was first mentioned when they went to clear the scene where the son of the Inspector General of Police hit two border border guys and, an, and a lady in an accident caused by drunk and driving and where no investigation about that incident has been done. That's the second person you should investigate and give a report about. Three, and, uh, uh, and which should be done, uh, I've said one is DCI, second is the Inspector General of Police. Number three, the DCI office at Nairobi area has a special unit which no one knows where it reports and to who and for what purpose. That special unit should be investigated as a matter of concern and urgency. I filed this statement fully aware that the next thing those three people have mentioned will be trying to get where I am and trying to get to me. If anything happens to me as a result of this statement, DCI is fully to blame. This is my statement to the Directorate of Criminal Investigations, Kenya. I've decided to put it in video so that no one can go and change the contents of what I said. I'll keep an original version of this recording. If anyone tries to interfere with it, then they will know 
that I have a copy. And this copy is also going to be shared with a trusted 50 people so that in the event I am not there, 49 people will have the statement.